Have you ever had someone mistake your hamster for a mouse? While these two species are often mistaken for each other, they both have some distinct characteristics that set them apart. So let's dive in and explore the unique qualities of hamsters and mice. First up, let's take a closer look at the hamster. They're native to various parts of the world, including Europe, Asia, and the Middle East. Hamsters were first introduced as pets in the mid 20th century. Since then, five different hamster species have been selectively bred and domesticated for the pet trade, which include the Syrian hamster, Chinese hamster, winter white dwarf, Campbell's dwarf, and Robrowski dwarf. Unlike hamsters, mice have had a long history of coexisting with humans, being seen as companions and pests for thousands of years. The common house mouse, for example, is believed to originated in Asia, but is now spread across the globe due to human migration and trade. The practice of domesticating mice for companionship likely dates back to ancient times, but it's hard to pinpoint exactly when they were first kept as pets. However, it is known that by the 18th century, mice were already established as pets. Another difference between hamsters and mice lies within their anatomy. First is the cheek pouches. Hamsters have these amazing expandable cheek pouches on both sides of their face, allowing them to store and transport up to 20% of their body weight in food and nesting. This is particularly useful in their natural habitats where oftentimes food is scarce. So it would be important for a hamster to hoard and gather as much food as they can find in a sitting. On the other hand, mice lack these pouches, which gives hamsters an advantage when it comes to hoarding food. Another physical difference is tail length. Mice are known for their long and slender tails, which are important for many reasons such as balance and agility. Because mice are skilled climbers, their tail acts as a counterbalance that helps to navigate various terrains. This is also why they're oh so talented at invading many spaces. Communication. Mice will also use their tails to communicate with other mice that can share emotions and even social status. And temperature regulation. Their tail plays a big part in thermal regulation because it contains blood vessels close to the surface, which helps regulate body temperature by dissipating excess heat. Hamsters, on the other hand, have very little tail real estate. This is for several reasons. Evolution. Hamsters evolved in different environments compared to mice. In these environments, having a long tail may not provide as much of an advantage as it does for mice who would live in a more diverse habitat. Burrowing. Hamsters are burrowing animals, creating extensive underground tunnels and chambers, so having a shorter tail allows a hamster to navigate their burrows more efficiently. And three, predator avoidance. Hamsters are also prey animals and having a shorter tail reduces the chances of being grabbed by predators. So because of this, hamsters are not good climbers with the exception of the Chinese hamster whose tail is slightly longer, but still is not capable of climbing as well as a mouse. So once you've learned these differences, identifying a hamster or mouse becomes very easy. Now, when it comes to habitat preferences, mice and hamsters have different tendencies. Hamsters, due to where they come from, naturally are ground dwellers and have a strong instinct for burrowing, as we've already mentioned. On the other hand, mice are highly adaptable and can thrive in various environments. They can be found in fields, forests, and even urban areas, so their enclosures may have similar aspects to each other, but also should look slightly different, as a hamster's enclosure should be adapted more so for a ground dweller, whereas mice should have more opportunities for climbing and more overall clutter. Many will argue about cage size between the two, but in all honesty, both deserve to have large enclosures because they require a lot of enrichment. It's also good to note that because of a mouse's small size and great climbing abilities, it's important to make sure any bar spacings are less than a quarter inch wide. Now, moving on to their social behavior. Hamsters are solitary creatures by nature, and most hamster species prefer to live alone due to how territorial they are, and housing multiple together often ends in serious injuries or even death. 
However, mice are highly social animals and are known to live in large groups called colonies. They enjoy the company of their own species and would engage in complex social interactions. And this goes for both female and male mice. Due to this, it's often recommended that male mice are neutered in order to live happily amongst others. For a mouse, a life alone can cause them to become stressed and lonely, whereas a hamster is much happier alone. Hamsters and mice share a pretty similar lifespan, on average living one and a half to two years. This is typically due to how overbred they are, leaving them with genetic conditions that you may not even be able to physically see. As their diets, hamsters and mice are both omnivores, meaning they eat a variety of plants, seeds, and protein-based foods. But even though they eat a similar diet, they still have their own unique nutritional requirements. So there you have it. While hamsters and mice share some similarities, such as both being rodents, they have distinct differences in size, anatomy, habitat preferences, social behaviors, and even their origins. So whether you prefer mice or hamsters, both can make wonderful pets. Let me know which species you prefer in the comments down below, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.